Hello everybody, welcome to today's stream where we are going to go mobile. Well, we're not really going to go mo mobile because uh, I can't uh, figure out how to uh, stream from my uh, mobile phone sc uh, screen. But what I am going to share with you is uh, are the four applications that I use to go mobile. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, tell you why you should go mobile at least occasionally when you are writing, okay? So, the four applications that I use are applications that are available on the Mac, on the iPhone and the iPad, okay? Why? Because I want to make sure that everything is integrated at, at all times, that, you know, if I write something on my phone that, you know, I, I don't have to copy paste it or uh, whatever to to move it to uh, to my Mac. If I do something on my Mac, it will be instantly on my phone uh, and and so on and so forth. Okay. So here are the four pieces of software that, that I use. The first one is Scrivener. Okay. So obviously I, I use Scrivener for all of my writing. Scrivener has an iPhone and an iPad version that are that do that have everything that Scrivener has, that sync everything. So your draft, your, your research, your PDFs, your figures, the whole thing, it's synced all the time. It does have one feature missing that sucks that it is missing, but you know, I understand that it's, it's, uh, it's probably not super easy to do, um, which is the uh, snapshot. Uh, function. So snapshot function basically allows you to take a snapshot of your document and then uh, keeps a, a record of all of those snapshots. So these are different versions of this text. Okay. So the way I, 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 uh, I uh, work around this is that if I'm working on my iPad or my iPhone, I'll just go, you know, I'm here in the discussion, right? Uh, so the, the, the interface just looks exactly the same on, on the phone or the iPad and you can have two windows side by side. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll go to, if I'm writing the discussion, I, I'll go to my notes for the discussion and I'll just copy and just uh, come here to the bottom and, and, and write a snapshot. Um, let's say... 6 October 13, uh, 1303. There you go. And I'll just paste it. Okay. And so, and when I get back to the, uh, to the office, I will actually copy this back into this, take a, a, a snapshot, do an undo so that I can have my new text and, um, and, um, and delete this from, from the notes. Okay. So there's a workaround. Um, there's a workaround uh, for you there. Uh, you can also just like uh, copy the, the text uh, below your main text in the same document and then just take a snapshot of, of that and then just delete what is at the bottom. So it will be something like here, snapshot. Uh, no, so here on the iPad, then I go back to the Mac, it syncs. Snapshot example, okay, it's done. And so then I go and I delete this, okay, there. So that's, that's the workaround, okay? But that is the only thing. Everything else on Scrivener works on the iPad, which is amazing not only on the iPad, but on the iPhone. Okay. So you can write on Scrivener on your iPhone. Obviously you don't have split window on, on, uh, on the iPhone for that you need the iPad, but you know, I guess that, you know, if you're working on, on, uh, on your phone, it's something that you're doing quickly. And so if you need uh, the, the split window, then, you know, there'll be enough time that, uh, that you'll be on the iPad. Obviously you can switch windows if you, if you need to, but you don't have the convenience of the split window on the phone. Okay. So Scrivener is the first one that I use. The main one that I use, it's my writing software. It has an iPad, an iPhone and a Mac. 
and a Windows version, all of this sync together seamlessly. If for some reason you open a document on your Mac and the phone hasn't synced yet, uh, it will create a folder here, you see here, a folder that says conflicts and it will have the, the documents where there is a conflict. And a conflict basically means that you did something on the document in your Mac before the iPhone was able to sync. So both the document on your phone and the document on your Mac are have been edited after you, um, you wrote on your phone. Yeah. So Scrivener, that's the one that I use. Second one that I use, and this is super important, is you need uh, a reference manager that has an iPhone or at least an iPad version. Mine, which is Bookends, it's one for, for the Mac, has that. So that's super important because, you know, sometimes you're on the reading uh, mode in your, in your paper, you have to read and, uh, uh, you know, check the literature and so on. So Bookends also has a Mac, um, a phone and an iPad version. No PC version for, for Bookends, but, you know, other, other um, softwares uh, have. But do not discount how important it is for you to have this on, uh, on your mobile as well. Now, if uh, Bookends is relatively cheap for, for the Mac, if you're using something super expensive or something that doesn't have an iPad or iPhone or whatever uh, device that you use, then what you can do is you can um, just have the PDFs of the papers that you're uh, working on on Scrivener. Okay? Also, if you are using a non-Scrivener compatible device, you can actually sync Scrivener with specific uh, text editing uh, applications that are available on platforms that are not iOS. I did this for many years before Scrivener was available for iOS. I did use this, um, uh, these uh, features. So the problem with that is that you know, you will probably struggle to have access to the, um, the documents in your research folder, but you'll have access to, uh, to the text, okay? So th there's a workaround. So Scrivener, bibliography software where you have your papers, okay? Now, third piece of software that I use is a note-taking um, a, a note taking app. Okay. There are uh, many of these that are free. I use this one, which is uh, Notability, which I paid for. And the reason I use Notability over, for example, the Mac uh, uh, Notes app, is, which is free, is because Notability uh, makes it far easier to write uh, with a pen because it has a little bit of a zoom window at the bottom. So you can do uh, you know, you can do some really nice notes and graphs and so on using that uh, Zoom window. So again, I do actually a lot of this, um, you know, thinking and writing on the iPad. And the reason I want an app that syncs seamlessly is the reverse of what happens with uh, Scrivener and uh, Bookends is I want to have my scribblings on my Mac, okay? I want to have my screws on my Mac. You can import this into a Scrivener as well if you want. So um, it's a great app. Final app that I use is uh, is an outliner. You know, just uh, I, I like to uh, use outliners to to think. Uh, outlining apps are are very expensive and they're way cheaper on iPad and iPhone. So I actually use Omni Outliner, and I use a cheap Mac version. Um, but I have the expensive version, which is cheaper than the cheap Mac version on the iPad and the, and the iPhone, which are, you know, far more powerful. And for outlining, I, the iPad is my, my main platform, uh, so to speak. Okay. And this is, you know, when you really need to think through some ideas and you think, you know, that you'll need to move things around. Basically, 
you know, you can outline in Scrivener, of course, but it's just helpful if you really want to move things around and work. Scrivener's outline is the elements of the outline are documents. Here, the elements of the outline can be paragraphs or sentences. So it's just easier to, to work with, okay? So this is my application suit. Scrivener to write, an outliner, a note-taking application where I can draw and uh, a reference management software. That's what I use, okay. Now, when do I uh, use this? When I commute, okay? So when I commute, I always, uh, if it's a long commute, I'll have the iPad. If it's a short commute, I'll have the iPhone. And this allows me to write as a commute. Should you do this? Yes. Why? Because one of the key mindsets that you need to grow out of is this idea of binge writing. You know, that you need to be in a quiet room and have four hours. Some, some people need days to write. You do not, okay? In a day of writing, there is writing that you do in 10 minutes, okay? So, I don't mean to say that I, I can write an entire paper in 30 minute slots or 15 minute slots with uh, interruptions in between. No, but you can do high quality writing in a one 15 minute slot that you have. So, so it's okay, you know, take a morning, take a day, take a week if you have that to write. I do that, that as well, you know, like take a whole morning or sometimes a whole day to write. And, you know, it helps to have a focus chunk of time, but you do not need a focus chunk of time to write. You do not need that. And the best way to get out of that mindset is to do commute writing. You know, just take the subway, open your iPad, open your iPhone and write for real on a paper that you're working on now. Okay, for real. Don't do it just to see how it is. Like do it for real. And you'll see like that, um, you know, some things will be good, some things will be bad. But guess what? At least for me, when I'm writing at home, like today, I wrote a whole morning. There are still some things that are good and there are still some things that are bad. Okay, so even if you don't need a mobile setup uh, like I do because, you know, my commute and I travel, uh, I, I work a lot in trains, um, at least use this setup to grow out of this mentality of binge writing. Even if you have a 10 minute commute to work, on subway or on a train or on a bus, write and write every day, you know, just, you know, those 10 minutes every day, write every day. Uh, and that will not only um, increase your the amount that you've written, help you think through as writing and therefore increase the, the quality of your ideas, but it will, it will also allow you to break out of this mindset of binge writing that you need massive blocks of time to be able to do any writing. Hope uh, this was uh, useful, a little more of a tips and tricks uh, video today, and I'll uh, catch everybody next week. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.